what other eyes and ears have not got to see and hear. The generations before us. And we need to be grateful and remind ourselves that what we experience today is because of the generations that have gone before us. The ones who are faithful to God. Uh, recently I had put up a post on my Facebook uh, page about, um, it was a video clip of a new priest who has just got ordained and he is giving his thanksgiving speech inside the church after the ordination. Uh, the speech is in Malayalam. But um, a beautiful speech where he is thanking his parents uh, for his own faith journey. And as he's thanking his parents, he, he mentions first about his mother, who is a kidney patient going through dialysis. And he says, my mother used to always tell me that we don't have money in the home is because of my dialysis and my treatment. And she would say sorry to the son that he didn't get any benefits of financial blessings because she was always sick. And he responds to his mother and he tells her, for me, the greatest wealth is the rosary that is in your hands. That is my greatest gift that has sustained me and blessed me. And then he speaks about his father and he says, every week my father would bring me one book of one of the saints and then would ask me to read the life of that saint and then he would ask me to practice the virtue of that saint. Every week that would happen. And he would say, only after I did that would I actually get my meals. Because I wouldn't get my meals. And so the father and the mother, the formation that they have given the son. And today he's so grateful as he's standing there becoming a priest. That it is, he's acknowledging his father and his mother's role in it. If the Blessed Mother were to give a thanksgiving speech for all the glory that she receives today, I'm sure Joachim and Anne would figure prominently in it. We always speak about Mary's big yes. When the angel Gabriel came to the Blessed Mother and made that announcement about the son who is going to be born. At the end of it, Mary gives that beautiful yes. But where did that yes come from? Mary had the freedom to say no. Mary's yes was surely of her own spirituality. It came from her own heart. It wasn't something that was forced. Mary wasn't forced to say yes by God. Mary was given an option. She could have said yes or she could have said no. But somewhere Mary in her heart has always been taught to say yes to God. And where did that come from? That obviously would have come from her parents. Who would have taught her to always say yes to God. To whatever God's will is, whatever God's desire is. And therefore, even in the celebration of the blessedness of Mary, we cannot but celebrate the grandparents, the earthly grandparents of Jesus. We cannot but celebrate the parents of Mary, people who would have taught the Blessed Mother to say yes to God. Dear brothers and sisters, when we when we pray today and we celebrate this feast, it might be good for us to stop a while and thank the Lord for the elders in our families. For the ones who have taught us to say yes to God. Or the ones who have taught our parents to say yes to God. And that is the reason why we are where we are today. 
in the midst of all the blessings we receive and all the graces that we receive. As today's gospel passage tells us, blessed are you because your eyes get to see and your ears get to hear. Truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you saw. He's speaking about himself. All the prophets were waiting and that is why in Luke chapter 2 we have prophet Simeon say that. Master, now you are dismissing Luke chapter 2 verse 29. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. I've been waiting for this moment. Look at Jesus making a reference to this. He says, so many prophets have been waiting for this moment. You have got to see it. Why? Because of the generations that have gone before you as well. So if today we have been blessed and we have the faith, we are sitting around an altar and we are celebrating a Eucharist, we have a lot to be grateful for. That someone either taught us or taught our parents or taught our grandparents to say yes to God. The generations that went before us. And we need to be a grateful generation. There's a beautiful verse in, uh, in, the, in the second letter to Timothy. When Paul is mentioning about young Timothy. And he says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 4 onwards. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith. He's speaking to Timothy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith. A faith that lived first in your grandmother, Louis, and then your mother, Eunice. And now I'm sure it lives in you. Such a beautiful, uh, beautiful statement to make and, and for Timothy to be able to hear this. His experience with Jesus wasn't just an experience that came from his own journey. But his experience with Jesus has come down from the elder generation. That he has come to know. That he has come to know the Lord from his grandmother. He has come to know the Lord from his mother. And that is why today when we celebrate the feast of Joachim and Anne, it's important for us to remember and be grateful to the generations that have gone before us who taught us the faith. Who taught us to say yes to Jesus. Who taught our parents to say yes to Jesus. Maybe today we are in different lands. Maybe today we are doing exceptionally well. At some point our parents went to a different land and started doing well. Somewhere on their journey they were able to say yes to Jesus. Who taught them that? Somewhere the grandparents did. The great grandparents did. And so let us today, in great humility, remember our grandparents. Remember our great-grandparents as we remember Saints Joachim and Anne. In the scriptures in the Old Testament, the Israelites would always uh, make this statement whenever they refer to God. They would say, the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The God of ancestors, they're remembering God's faithfulness to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're remembering Abraham and Isaac and Jacob's faithfulness to God. We also need to do the same. Lord, I thank you for those who have taught me to say yes to God. Nowadays, so often in a generation where sometimes even parents are too busy with so many things, it is the grandparents who are forming the children and their faith. The grandparents were teaching the little ones about Jesus. I have so many grandparents whose insistence, in spite of their own children having been baptized and been Catholics for so many years, in spite of that, their parents are so busy that there are so many grandparents whose insistence is the reason why their grandchildren are Christians today. That they are people who believe in Jesus. So let us remember our grandparents. Let's remember our great-grandparents, all the elders who have taught us to say yes to God.